Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to paint a halo of light at night using a drone and the light that's built into it, um, using the same light to illuminate the foreground in your image and how to capture it using your camera. Now for this you're going to need three things, obviously uh, a drone, a camera and a tripod. Let's get stuck into it. First, you'll have to choose the subject matter that you're going to use for this image. Now, the great thing about this technique is it doesn't have to be something that's particularly interesting. It could be something as simple as a shed, a tree in the field, uh, or in the case of the image that I shot, an abandoned bus. It's important to check your local laws regarding drones, in particular flying drones at night. Once you have your location and you're set on it and you, you, know, you can fly a drone there, no problems, you'll want to set up your tripod and your camera first. Now, I suggest setting it up in a portrait orientation just so you can have a bit more of the sky and your foreground. When you're picking your composition, you want to leave enough space in the top sky for your light painting, your halo. Maybe two thirds of the image should be reserved for this. Before we start as well, I want to know a key thing to making this work are weather conditions. You can't have any wind. Any wind will throw the drone off and it will make it quite difficult to get that perfect circle in your halo. In terms of clouds, it doesn't really matter if you've got a clear sky or a cloudy sky. If you have a clear sky, you'll probably get a lot more detail with the stars, but once again, not a deal breaker. So, how do you create a perfect circle of light in the sky? This is the question that um, most of you asked. This can be done within the DJI Go app or DJI Fly app, depending on what drone you have. So the first step is uh, forcing the landing light to remain on when you're flying. So the landing light usually only comes on when uh, it's dark when you're trying to land and on the DJI 2 Pro and 2 Zoom, it, there, there's two LEDs at the bottom here. All right, once your drone's on, tap on the three dots in the top right corner. We're gonna go into the second section, which is visual navigation settings. And on the bottom here, you'll see bottom auxiliary lighting. It's set to auto by default. We're gonna turn this on to on. Right, as you see here, this is the light, it's on now all the time. And uh, that's what we're gonna to use to draw our halo and also use it to illuminate the foreground. Now the light's on, we're gonna set up the drone to fly automatically on its own in a circle. We're gonna use the point of interest intelligent flight mode to do this. So set up your drone as you normally would. And the first thing we're gonna do is fly above your focal point or subject matter. Once you're at a height you're happy with, we're gonna go here and activate the point of interest intelligent flight mode. You'll see it's the icon with the mountain and the um, little arrow flying around it. Once you're in, you wanna set your point of interest. Easiest way is just to draw a little box around it. If you're doing this in the dark, you might need a torch or lantern for it to focus on. Once you've set your point of interest and the drone's accepted it, the next part is setting your radius and altitude. This is where you're gonna to have to experiment and alternate between taking test shots in your camera and tweaking settings as well. So based on your composition and um, how close you are to your subject matter, the radius might be small or very wide. If you're close to your subject, the radius will, will be smaller. If uh, you're further back or shooting an ultra wide angle, it might be wider. The altitude will determine where the halo sits in your image and it will also affect how much of the ground is illuminated. So if you're shooting with an ultra wide angle and you've got lots of sky above you, you can probably go a little bit higher up. If you're shooting from far back using a zoom, you might need to go a little bit lower. Just keep in mind though that the higher you go, the less bright the drone's light will be on the ground because we're not only shooting for the halo, we're also shooting for the drone light illuminating the ground. See in the app, there's another factor as well and this here is speed. And this is important for two reasons. First reason, uh, depending on what shutter speed you're using your camera, you might need to speed the drone up or slow it down to form the full circle in your image. So let's say you're using a shutter speed of five seconds, but it's taken the drone 15 seconds to form the full circle. Well, based off that, you're not gonna get a full halo in your shot. So you'd have to crank up the speed to ensure it completes a full revolution within the shutter speed you've set or adjust your shutter speed. The second important reason is that the speed of the drone will actually determine the angle the drone flies at. And why this is important 
Well, if your drone is going too fast and at too steep of an angle, the light on the drone might not be fully visible in your shot. So with those variables in mind, here are the settings I use for this shot. I've got a radius of five meters, a height of 13 meters, speed of seven kilometers per hour, and these were the following settings on my DSLR. The drone undercarriage light's pretty bright, so you don't have to crank up the ISO too much. And there you have it. When you've got both your drone and the camera set up, it's just a matter of tweaking the settings, experimenting, taking lots of photos, and just, just having fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you create some cool images using this technique. And if you enjoyed it, give us a like, and uh, I'll see you next time.